Good morning and welcome to our update, our August update with Mark Cameron, the CEO of Bowls New Zealand. And although we might have snow all around the country, that certainly doesn't mean the bowls activity uh, slowed down because there's still been there's a full June, July plenty of events and of course a lot coming up. So Mark and I are going to cover uh, a number of topics uh, of interest to all the bowlers around the country. So I was just sharing that I played yesterday, Kevin, yes, right. in, a, in a major junior event up in Manly. And um, uh, alas, I didn't realise in bowls there's actually a prize for the team that has no wins and has the fewest number of ends won. And, and I may, my team may have won that award out of 28 teams yesterday. So there is still bowls happening, but clearly the quality of the bowls is maybe not up to standard for everybody. Perhaps not, but there's still plenty of activity in the club. There is, there? there is. Whether it be on or off the green. Oh, it's look, Manly Bowling there. Club, 28, 28 sides up there. Fantastic, I thought that was brilliant. It? Yeah. And it's fours. So in reading some of the correspondence or social media correspondence around the country, there's still a lot of uh, PBA, a whole lot of other events that are still going on. So, oh, I think, and that's the benefit of the artificial greens. Uh, and now with the lids and the roofs going over top of as, as well, it's, um, you know, the reality is it's a 12 month of the year sport. It certainly is. So our first thing is the 2020 census. You've got some news from the 2020 census that the, uh, you've yeah. accumulated all the numbers. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a tough old one in the COVID years or the COVID years to really um, push success too much because we all understand that there's a heck of a lot of businesses and industries in New Zealand and internationally that are struggling. Um, but good news for us, uh, membership, um, a huge increase on, on our membership, on our playing membership numbers. So it went up 7.2%. That's affiliated, paid up, participating members. Yes. So those Fantastic. are those that, that, that play bowls on the Saturdays and the Sundays and the midweeks. Um, so 72 is just a phenomenal number. Um, negating that somewhat though is, is what's happened uh, to our clubs and, and the businesses within the clubs because of lockdowns and COVID. And, and that was that we saw a, a decent 10, 15% drop on casual participation numbers. To be expected. To be expected. Um, I, I guess the follow on from that though is that it affects the bottom line of the club. Yes it does. Uh, yeah. You know you haven't got those Christmas functions, the bar turnover and, and we need to be mindful of that. Um, I guess good news there in the last 12 months though we had no club uh, in New Zealand that fell over because of COVID. Um, you know and credit New Zealand government, Sport New Zealand uh, and uh, clearly the clubs themselves. Uh, and the volunteers for ensuring that you know our bowling clubs and our communities uh, were left um, protected through the COVID times. Well, you and I, Mark, we, and you a lot more than me, but we're fortunate to travel around the country quite a bit you know, post COVID. Yep. And th the good thing is, with, with uh, what we evidence out there, that there's still a very good vibe amongst the clubs, isn't there, about the, the you know the going forward. Oh, look, uh, very much so. And I think what I'm starting, what we're starting to see now is that our uh, you know, our mid-range to stronger clubs are getting stronger. Um, uh, you know, you, you st we're starting to see some junior numbers come through a number of our clubs, which are, you know, bigger than I've ever seen, and certainly in my four years uh, in the last 12 months. So there's a real good junior junior sense coming through. At the same time, there are a number of clubs, shall we say, in the, in the, less, in the lower half of our, number of our membership numbers that are struggling. Um, and that could be for a variety of reasons from, you know, just, you know, the community, the town size, um, geographic through to the facilities, that, through to the people running the clubs. And we need to be mindful of that group. Um, what's nice, though, is, shall we say, the top 50% are going really well. Um, but, you know, there are a number of clubs still that are struggling and need to be supported, motivated, encouraged um, uh, to, to push on and, you know, and, and grow. So the census figures... Um, show some really strong positive notes for the sport. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think the 7.2% the growth followed a 1.1 and a 1.6% growth over the previous two years. So we're at a 10% over three years near Yeah, now. which is fantastic, Certainly isn't it? Because is. you look at where Bowles has been for probably 20 years or a number of years anyway, uh, where it's been in that sort of decline phase. Um, for us to show this increase is, is superb. Well, it highlights, to me anyway, it highlights the value of communication which we're seeing collectively within the sport, aren't we? From club centres, Bold New Zealand, so communication, participation. Uh, and I think another thing which has become very much uh, a positive thing, the inclusiveness that we're seeing 
at, within clubs as well, which perhaps wasn't quite as strong as what it was before. But, you know, we've opened the doors, so to speak. Yeah, I think, and, and it probably leads to a couple of other agenda items, but, but, but one is that we're, you know, um, the community and through broadcasts, that image of our sport is changing. Certainly so that is. image of, you know, granddad and his whites playing bowls on a Saturday is now becoming, is now being replaced with, you know, young, old, I think, if, I don't know if the graphics come yeah, behind yeah, me. Yeah, that uh, mural behind us there certainly epitomises, really confirms that, doesn't it? it highlights it exactly. Oh, the diversity that, you know, that we have within our sport, um, the colour, uh, the men playing women, the diff different ethnicities. So I think that's, that's helping the change, the growth. Uh, and the other thing is is the the business house, the social, the three five bowls, whereby now we have a game that's you know that one hour long game that you don't have to dress up in uniform and for or cool. you know the rules aren't overly complicated. Not that bowls rules are, but you know you can go down and play on a Wednesday or a Thursday night and just enjoy 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 a game of bowls with your mates. And I think that's the growth too and that's that's the change for our game so that really rolls into the next point that we're going to talk about that because you do this you know, in, annually uh, around the centers visiting a number of the centers and you've been out and about doing yep. the, the annual sort of visitation and talking and yeah, yeah. Uh, and i you know i think it's really important that um bowls new zealand uh and, and in this case um i um uh, get out and about and and share what's happening around the community uh, or what's happening around the country, whether it's facilities, whether it's business house bowls, whether it's the work we're doing with our youth or the broadcast TV stuff. So um, uh, 27 regions, uh, I am sitting on about number six at the moment, I think so far. So I will be uh, heading out, uh, out and about uh, over the next uh, probably six to eight weeks, visiting regions uh, mm -hmm. and, and just sharing messages, but also listening as well. I think it's important. One thing that I've noticed, Mark, is again, it comes back to social media, how that sport is now really accepting social media. And pleasing to see, I saw uh, Taranaki, I saw Man of a Two, where they're posting on the, on the Facebook pages, look, that you're coming to the region shortly. Um, you know, come along to the get together, prepare your questions or whatever, listen, yep. to, uh, listen to what's got been, what's been said and all that sort of, and that to me, hats off to the centres for doing that, but it just highlights that we've gone away from that, collar and tie, you know, very regimented type of way of how we accepted the game to a very, very we want input environment. Oh, and it needs to be casual. The last thing, you know, people want to see is me turning up with a suit and tie. I don't think you'd ever see that anyway. <laughs> um, but turning up with a suit and tie and having a PowerPoint presentation and, and it being a do as we say type message. Uh, it needs to be just a, a sharing of what's happening. Uh, and hopefully that might inspire, or them, uh, others that might, you know, you know, they might learn some things in terms of experience, uh, or or understand, you know, the bowls, the bowls New Zealand strategy as well. Well, I, I think really, you know, we talk about the centre visits and in, in, in and around there. You know, you and I both know what the vocabulary is like now to say three years ago, four years ago. So the vocabulary now is about how we can work collectively together. To deliver good outcomes for the sport. Now, of course, there's issues. There's yep. always going to be issues. It's, it's the same with any sport. But let's say there's more ticks on the right side than, than crosses on the other side. Oh, we're not we're not seeing many issues now, Kevin. Um, I think uh, our role now is. I think we've almost transcended um, this national body, and now we're saying to clubs directly into clubs, saying, "How can how can we help you out? Do you need a flyer done or a poster done?" Do you want some help engaging with your local school? Do you want some stuff to, to get you set up with a business house competition or a three five competition? And we're now able to engage directly with clubs and, and a number of clubs are confident and comfortable doing, doing that with us. And I think that's really positive because, you know, shall we say prior, we were a little bit aloof. Um, Fear uh, comment. Yeah, uh, uh, and um, you know, just, just a, a great team of people, um, but equally, a really willing community who who, oh, who who'll put up their hand and say, look, you know, we've been putting off this constitution thing for 20 years or 30 or 50 years. Can you help us? Uh, and, you know, and it's easy for me to, I'm very good at delegating, Kevin. Well, See, well, it's easy to hand that yeah, off to Martin. But, you know, I'm not sort of giving out roses and, and, and violets and, that, and saying this, Mark, but the sport has transformed itself now into talking. And, and, and asking rather than 
sitting behind the community room door, so to speak. And that only de that, that delivers positives. Yeah, we're not. We're still not though. Where where if I was to be honest in terms of that answer, I'd say we're probably 200, 250 clubs into that. There's still there's 472 bowling clubs in New Zealand. We don't engage with every club, uh, and every club obviously doesn't engage with us. So we've still got a way to go. But you know, I, I feel like we've broken the back in terms oh, of that absolutely. communication. Absolutely. So recently, following on from that, we've just finished the Champion of Champions series around the country. Uh, and from the south to the north. Uh, yes, you know, and it's been, from the coldest to the warmest. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it's, it went well. Yep. Your thoughts? Uh, yeah, um, very, very uh, well. So the number of centres taking part surprised us. So we got on average around about 21, 22 centres. Yes, centers. it was around that. Yeah. Um, out of 27, we thought that was brilliant. Uh, because tr historically, or certainly three years ago, it was 15, 14, 15 type, yes. type numbers. Um, so that's been really positive. The quality to play, it's been really good. You know, we've obviously broadcast it, which has been which has been great. Um, I'd never been to Hastings before. Magnificent complex. Oh, and and the support. First time I've been there as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to, to be honest about it, and um, yeah, I thought it was. Oh, the support out of Hastings, the support from Dunedin, uh, Pukekohe, and, and then Nainai as well um, has been terrific. From the bowling clubs to the community, um, uh, just, you know, hats off to those people that, that fronted up, you know, in and, and sometimes cold conditions as well. One thing that was pleasing as well with the Champion Champions, Mark, is that in, in most of the events, we saw, like, at, in, in Pukekohe in the fours, we saw the Pukekohe, the, the Pukekohe Club's women's team, into the, the semi-final. Yeah. In, in, the, in the triples, we had a similar sort of situation with the, the Hastings ladies who got beaten like on the last morning. And yeah. So we saw a nine-nine, Robbie Bird, you know, so yeah. it was good to see the, the locals um, making their way into the latter stages. Do you know what my highlight though was? And I can't remember the two Jays, but I interviewed both of them in Pukekohe. Um, one was uh, Karen De Jong's father. Oh, Josh. Josh. Yes, Josh, Josh was 102 30, years 30, old 30, and still playing bowls. And driving his car. And driving <laughs> his car. And I recall interviewing him and, he, and he, what did he say to me? He said, um, uh, they didn't want me, to get, want me to get a new car. So for my 100th birthday, I went out and bought a new one himself. <laughs> yeah. And I thought that was great. And then um, the other Jay, uh, from Timaru, I think he was. No, from oh, uh, further Omaru. Uh, correct. Omaru. He, yeah, the man from way down south. Yes, yeah. uh, 89 years of age, visually impaired, yeah. couldn't see the jack down the other end. And there he is playing champ for champ fours uh, with his mates uh, from his club in a national final. And I thought that was just a superb story too. Well, so you've not only got the elite, you know, we've got the top models. Yeah, the highlights, Mark, and, and, it, and it was evident right throughout these events, it highlights that People enjoy winning the club championships. They enjoy winning the centre uh, playoffs, but then they really enjoy getting to the national f playoffs, where they guarantee at least a couple of days play of section play. Yep. They play against some of the best, yep. and they can make their way through to the quarterfinals and progress from there. And that was very evident right through the, the, the right through all four disciplines. Yep, I, I get asked every now and again, why don't we play, play these champ champs during the summer, i.e., on natural greens? Um, the answer is, is is simply that if we were to go and impose the champ the four weeks of champion champs uh, onto a centre calendar or even a club calendar, we would uh, the impact would be almost catastrophic. Well, so so that's why we're playing in the winter. We don't have a choice, uh, and and we'll continue to play indoors for for the time being anyway. Well, from a from a past ex bowler, so to speak. There was always a there was always a trouble trying to get champion champion events final at and done etc. Yep. And at long last, I feel that we've arrived at the right outcome, and it being played indoors in the off season, and every, 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 it's, every, yeah, it's 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 just a challenge though. I do appreciate that a a people play in the champ of champs at club and centre level on natural greens. The challenge, though, is for a for someone from a club or a region that doesn't have any artificial greens. Suddenly, you know, they've got to turn up to a national champ of champs and play on an artificial green, having had no practice over the last two, three months, whatever it might be. So it is a challenge, um, but it is just one of those ones we've just got to weigh up and go pros and cons. You know, the pros well, the pros for this in the winter work. Well, the highlight to me was at Hastings, where. 
we met the Waitangi ladies who yes. had come all the way down. Yep. Six members, six women members. So there was a, a team of three and they had two others there with them. One couldn't make it. And there they were playing in the champion of champion triples and absolutely delighted to be there. Yep. And in fact, have invited us up to their opening um, day uh, in Waitangi uh, for the next for the coming season. Excellent, excellent. And to me, that was really one of the, yep. and myself both, that was one of the highlights was spending some time with the those ladies from Waitangi in the, in the, in the, in the triples. Yeah. Uh, small and club, and there they are, you know, the one, the, one there, well, that, they may have been the only team, there might have been two teams in, in the club team, I'm not sure, but then they won the Far North one and made their way down to Hastings to play in the final. Yep. And uh, in fact, just need to win their last game, they were qualified for post-section play. So. And, and, and once again, you know, the Fours in Pukekohe, uh, Carlton Cornwall, you know, one of our premier elite clubs, won the women's, um, but the men's was won by teams. Correct. You know, so First title. Yeah, oh, I think mean, that's brilliant. First title. Yep. Brilliant. It was, it highlights, isn't it? Yep. So, yeah, it was very good. So we're unlikely to make uh, many changes to the Champ of Champs for next year. We will, um, you know, there's a few ideas out there to try and improve it. I think, in our mind, let things settle for two years. Let's let's run this for two years, uh, and then we'll do a review and take on board some of those well, suggestions. Well, I think the formula's working at the moment. So Bowl Street 5, 200 clubs lining up in uh, Bowl Street 5 last year, in the, in the club, uh, yep. to get through the final. So 200, 200. Good 200, 200 plus, uh, really good entries, obviously, for the 3-5, uh, and uh, ended up with 10 sides being there in Nine Eye. You know, it seems like a long time ago now, but it was probably the end of April, was it? <laughs> no, either can I. Uh, we'll go with the end of April, someone can correct us if need be. Um, 10, 10 clubs down there, or 9 plus the Parajacks, uh, and, you know, um, ended up with Nelson and Hastings, Hastings yes. uh, coming through. Um, uh, so they'll be playing in the televised league October through December this year. Um, in the same club formats, so looking forward to, for this year, 200 odd, well ideally 200 odd plus again would be ideal, wouldn't it? Yeah, look, it, it's, it's now got its place on our, on our calendar, it's earned its place. Uh, not only because of TV, but because of the number of clubs that are coming through, you know, winning their clubs, winning their centre regions, uh, and going on to national finals. So 3-5 will stay um, in its place. Uh, but congratulations, as I said, to all those that made the finals. Uh, Para Jacks were extremely unlucky, having they gone were. through unbeaten. They were, they went through unbeaten, didn't they? Yep, in, section, yep. in section play, they did. Yep. Uh, so now we've got Nelson and Hastings. Nelson joining Stokes. So we've got Two lots of airfares coming out of yeah, Nelson, there is, Nelson District there is. this year. It was nice. I see. I saw a clip of they were Stoke wishing uh, Nelson all the best, which I thought was very really nice. To be yeah, there. yeah. But then you know Nelson's a pretty star-studded side too, isn't it? Oh, absolutely. Joe Edwards, absolutely. Smith, Richard Collette. Uh, yep, Richard. Yep. Richard as well, uh, and others. I'm sure will join join those. Uh, they have a, str have a strong side, and we saw, you know, Dean Drummond, very very good player, you know, spearheading that that uh, Hastings side. And they'll have, you know, from what we saw, uh, remembering, of course, that their custom resurface at Hastings is indoor. So uh, I'm picking it. They'll have a competitive side as well for the TV uh, series. I tell you, and I don't know whether you've got a general comment on this, but what I've noticed in the last two or three, two years, probably primarily, is that the men and women, you would have said men were at that level and women were at that level for quite some time. But boy, they're getting close now. Oh, um, absolutely. Uh, to the point that it wouldn't surprise them, it probably won't be in our time in the next 20 years or whatever, or 10, 20 years, but um, that we will have open champ open nationals where men are playing women. Well, they do the Olympics now. They, yeah, they mix them. Mix them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, and you know, and, and you know, we, we're going off topic a little bit, but 2032, the Olympics are in Brisbane. Yes. Uh, and I would, if I was a betting man, I'd say that lawn bowls will be at the Olympics in 2032. Uh, and won't that be a thrill? And if it's in the Olympics, I'll I'll make you a bet that it's a mixed gender um, uh, sport. One would think so. Yep. One would think so. Yep. And of course, if that was to happen, that opens opportunity for the para, like the para jacks as well. Oh, that go, yeah. go further down the track, doesn't it? You know? Yeah. So it's a, yeah. Let's hope that that happens. So national events coming up 2022. We know we've got the nationals, of course pairs and singles in, in Christchurch and yep. the fours and mixed pairs later in the year in New Plymouth. The Taranaki, be careful there, Kevin. <laughs> Ke 
careful. I've already told Hara that they that they'll probably have some national fours and mixed pairs. So and they would be and they would be delighted to do so. Yes, but they wouldn't be pleased being called New Plymouth. Would no, they? It is Taranaki. It is collectively. Yes. Yep. Yeah, it is and. And it'd be a great venue, just like uh, South Otago was last year. So, yeah. some changes for the formats, or yeah, um, uh, we're tinkering with it a little bit. So, uh, national singles next year will be two days of qualifying. Good, good move. Well, yeah. Um, uh, so the elite player uh, will say, actually, I prefer you know the top players prefer just one day of qualifying, get it done, win their three games out of four, and away they go. Um, but the surveys we put out the, after this last Nationals showed that uh, at least 60% were in favour of two days qualifying. Win four out of six uh, qualify, and I guess... Well, it brings in consistency with the peers as well. Yeah, and the forwards too, yeah, for that and, matter. And the other thing which it does, which I think is important, uh, Mark, if you're, a, if you're, I'll say, a club team or club combination, uh, it does give you the added incentive where you know that you're going to have two days of singles and you've got two days of pairs, you're not going to, it just, it just has got a wee bit more, I think, uh, consumer appeal. Yeah, it does. Um, so, so it has that appeal and, and I, I don't mind saying too, it has an administrator's appeal because absolutely. if it rains on that one day of singles, yeah. as we found out as this found year, it, absolutely. Uh, it creates a little bit of chaos. So okay. if there's two days of qualifying in singles, um, it just gives us that little bit of a breather because we'll, within two days, unless it's horrendous weather, we're going to get some qualifying games in. Well, it gives you the opportunity that if you let's say one day rained out, you can go to a one day with four rounds. It's, it can, it can exactly right. You know, and with yep. technology now, it's easy enough to sort of do that sort of yep. thing. Yep. You know, so so it, it gives us that. <laughs> so the um, singles has gone, and and therefore, um, well, I guess, guess therefore, but the mixed pairs will go the same way. So mixed pairs will now be two days of qualifying, win four out of six. And um, again, I think, build on the success of the first year in Central Otago and now in Taranaki, um, to me, that's a big tick. Oh, when, when, we tick. Have, when we have 406 people take part in the mixed pairs, uh, that suggests it's a, you know, it's a, it's a national event now. I just urge the people of Taranaki you know, because there's always been the thought about, you know, the Taranaki Open Fours, men and women. But I'm yep. saying right now to the people of Taranaki, get in behind this this festival of bowls. You know, it's interesting, we saw just last weekend how Taranaki support things, where they, Taranaki's first rugby game this year, they, took, they couldn't play at Rugby Park, moved it to Anglewood? Pukikura Park. Oh, Pukikura. But they oh, hadn't yeah. played there since 1945, by the way. Yep. And it was full. Yep. So the people of Taranaki, if it, they will support, they, they do support. Yeah. And I'm saying to the clubs around Taranaki right now, you've got fours, you've got two days of qualifying for men's and ladies fours, you've got two days of qualifying for your national mixed pairs. What a great opportunity to really get, get them behind it. Well, I've booked my annual leave and I'm skipping a side at the Taranaki fours and I'm skipping a side at the national fours as well. I haven't got a partner for the mixed pairs yet, I'm just throwing that out there. <laughs> Joe <laughs> Edwards, if you're available. <laughs> But, um, but, yeah, I, I, look, I, I think they will. I think um, Taranaki will be a great, great venue. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure it will be too. So, so, so for the Nationals going forward next year in Christchurch, you've got, your, you've got two days of qualifying for the men's and women's singles, two days of qualifying for the men's and women's uh, pairs. Then we go to Taranaki for the uh, fours, and that's uh, two days of qualifying, and uh, followed by the mixed pairs, and again, two days of qualifying for the mixed pairs. Well, to me, that's a big tick. Well, it's, 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 it's pretty simple to remember too, isn't it now? Absolutely. We don't have to think too hard. Uh, so on top of that, the Interclub Sevens will be in Wellington. The Intercentre will be in the North Harbour uh, this year, which is great. Champ of Champs will sort those venues out very soon as well for next year. Um, secondary Schools Nationals will be in Auckland. Now, um, just on that, I see we've got Rangatahi written down here to talk about. So we had the postponed COVID championships. So is this now, when's this going to be held now? Is this so, the... so it is, so our, our um, postponed COVID ones uh, will now be March of 22. Right, okay. Um, but we are looking to um, test the waters this, this December uh, and see if we can't run a secondary schools or a rangate singles uh, event. So I think entries are open for that at the moment. 
uh, you know, and we look to, to kickstart that a little bit more and give, give a bit more life to the secondary school space. Uh, and it's probably, you know, if I was to, to, to put a little cross against our scorecard over the last three years, three or four years, I don't think we've invested enough in the Rangitahi secondary school space, youth space. So that's our intent. So we're, we're pushing hard down this path. So again, it's a positive moving forward, isn't it? Yeah. Now, yeah. international bowls, we know we've had a lot of things curtailed. And of course, the COVID thing still is around with us. We saw the postponement of the World Bowls, all sorts of things. So we, we, we've got three major events, the World Champs, Commonwealth Games and, and Trantasman, haven't we? Those are three. Yeah, and that's, and that's pretty much it for us. Uh, you know, I think one day, we'd, uh, very soon, we'll, we'll probably look to bring in a um, Oceania type champs. Um, will that involve the Blackjacks? Not quite sure yet, but you know, certainly a New Zealand A or a potential New Zealand Maori or a um, type yep. side uh, will be quite good. Um, so Oceania, trans is really important to us. I'm probably inclined to say now that we probably won't play the one in November in Australia. I, I, you know, the, the world is changing and, you know, we're not quite getting where we want to get to with COVID. It's um, fair to say, Mark, if you're thinking about that sensibly, we've more than, I don't know, but one would think we've got a window, window to more than likely mid-September to see where things are at and, and if things haven't, if we've still got uncertainty, it's very difficult to, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. to be positive about it, isn't it, really? It is. I think we're probably a month or two too soon, but uh, as you said, let's, let's just park that for a little bit uh, as long as we keep everyone involved in the conversation. So that's the trans Tasman. There'll be another one in March or April next and year. And the next one's going to be held in New Zealand, is that correct? No, we don't know that yet, actually. Right, OK. Uh, it needs to be held on a green and in conditions that simulate then the itself conflict. to Australia, where I, I know Broad Beach have been talking or working towards creating a what I would call a UK type. A 10 second green, <laughs> yes. Um, so so uh, that's the trans Tasman Com Games um, at the moment. Uh, all of our top players are out there, as I understand it, training on croquet greens. Oh, yeah. Thanks croquet greens and croquet New Zealand for the, for the support. Um, because they need to uh, replicate those conditions that they'll face in the UK, which are 40 metres, 10 seconds, uh, and, you know, and grass, and probably not the, the perfect surface as well. No, um, no. Uh, um, in saying that, although it was two years ago, um, I was at Leamington on Spa when the English Women's Championships were on, and it was pleasing to see that the work that had been done to try and present, even at Leamington on Spa, which is like the head, Worthy yep. and Leamington on Spa being the two main bowls things in, in the UK or in England. But it was pleasing to see, and talking to Sian Honor, who's in that English women's squad, to see the uh, acceptance of trying to get a more universal, acceptable speed and presenting greens on a different surface enjoyment than what so often in England hasn't been an enjoyment service yep. um, for international Oh, look, I'm, I'm sure they will do a good job, but at the same time, they're not going to take away their home advantage oh, they're, either. No, they're not. No, no, they're It'd not. be like New Zealand dropping from 18 second greens down to 12 or 14 seconds Absolutely. for a world champ. We're not going to do that. But we're the not. good thing is, I suppose, is whereas before England were quite sort of reticent about making some changes, it would appear now they're more open to try and be more collective than, than what they may have been in the past. That's really what, that's the impression that I left with them from Lemon on Spa with. So yep. that, that's good. And, and I should probably add because I don't think we've really promoted it widely. So Mike Kernahan um, retired uh, yes. from from international bowls. Um, Son's but, birthday today. Yeah. Uh, um, but will be the lead coach uh, going into Commonwealth, or is the lead coach going into Commonwealth Games? So Mike is currently working with. Uh, Peter Ballas and others uh, to um, get the squad uh, the team prepared and selected um, so that hopefully we medal and we medal well in the 22 Commonwealth Games. Right, so on high performance, anything else to add at this um, stage? I'll probably, I'll just, just, and beyond that is there's a World Champs in 23, uh, which we need to be oh, mindful of, course, of as well. Of course, now changed. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, it's now every two years we've got a World Champs as opposed to every four, which I think is fantastic. So we've dropped the, the Asia Pacifics have now been removed uh, and it'll be a World Champs every in two years. So we've got Commonwealth Games every four years and a World Championship 
every two, two years. years. Yeah. Yep. So there'll be one year effectively if I've done my maths right when there's no no event as such. Well, that's that's a, that's a good. Yeah. Uh, and probably in terms of this communication, it's it's worth me acknowledging. Well, it is. It's um, uh, worthy of me acknowledging Koshak Patel's contribution. So we've announced that Con Koshak uh, is leaving Bowls New Zealand, uh, leaving after nine years of service. Um, to the bowls community, uh, high performance, uh, and in the coaching space. Uh, so he's moving on to to other pastures. I, I suspect Kevin, as we get older, we start looking for for different things to do with our lives, and and uh, I'm sure that's where Coach is at right now. Um, but not only nine years, but he's also got 25 years in high performance as well. So um, I guess from my perspective, uh, he'll be missed. Uh, and I know that will be shared by the players and the coaching management staff around the country. Yeah, I'm sure it will be. And, you know, thanks, Kojak, for your commitment, you know, not only to, to the sport of bowls, but sport in general, but, you know, the last nine years of bowls. And, you know, you've been, uh, you know, hands to the wheel. And the uh, last 18 months in a very trying environment to try and put a high performance program together, yep. manage it, run it, and get results. Uh, has been challenging. So, uh, yeah, I'd say on behalf of the bowlers out there, Kojak, thanks very much, and to wish you uh, all the best for your future, wherever that may take you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Kevin. Twilight Bowls. So um, daylight. It's interesting. I heard this now, it's just coming in here this morning. I heard Ian Smith talking on, on SEN. And, and, you know, we're only a month away from spring. We're only then two months away from daylight saving and twilight bowls. <laughs> it is, uh, and and it's it's interesting. The more I get around the clubs and, and learn, you know, about their business house or their twilight bowls, the more I realise how important it is in terms of numbers. Um, uh, you know, there's a man in the weekend trying my best to win a game of bowls, and you know, and they and they have a great pre and post uh, Christmas twilight bowls program on their artificial greens up there. Um, and they've really adopted 3-5 as a format. So oh, look, it's just, it's just continuing that message to say that if we want to get people playing bowls as full playing members on Saturdays, our best vehicle to do that, our best avenue, is to get them playing on a Wednesday, Thursday night socially. Socially be the operative. Socially, and it may take 10 years before they come across and become full playing members. But the, chances, but the chances of them becoming full play members are quite high within that period of time, as opposed to someone who doesn't know bowls just deciding that they're going to be a full playing member. Do we know by the chance, Mark, you know, that, that seven, just over 7% overall increase, do we know of that 7% increase of how many of those people have touched the game, so to speak, and be it be business house, social bowls, or whatever? No, we don't. And, and that's probably a, a next step for us is to find out a little bit more about the people that are playing bowls. Um, uh, you know, we've got a reasonable idea of age and gender. I think we, we clear, click, tick those two boxes, but we don't know where they came from. Um, we don't know anything about ethnicities uh, of the people, what communities they're from. Yeah, very um, good view Abilities, yeah. you know. Um, yeah. We've got, we're a sport that's ideally suited for uh, people with physical challenges, um, and there's a number of playing in our game. We just don't we don't know enough about our community uh, yet. Yeah, when you say that, there is a lot of sort of it's it's, it's pretty important information on planning going forward as well, isn't it? Or of yeah. marketing and doing a whole raft of opportunities. And of course, you know, with having this increase, you know, it, 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 the clubs do it well. We know that. that but but making sure that there there's an appetite to, for those new players. That seven point one percent increase that suits their time frames, their yep. you know their viewpoint, uh, and and Twilight Bowls gives a very good introduction to that, doesn't it? Oh, and, and even within clubs and centres now, we're all uh, a lot of clubs and centres are starting to click and go. Actually, let's not ask them to commit all day Saturday to bowls, and possibly even all day Sunday. We might run an event or a competition that's morning only, or that's afternoon only on one day. Um, you still have the other ones, but actually, you know, for someone who's working, you've got kids or whatever it might be, you know, committing to a Saturday morning from 8.30 to, to 1.30 is okay, but actually committing from Saturday 8.30 to 5.30 and then doing Sunday 
and it's then going to work it, Monday to Friday, it's, it's impossible. too far into that. It is. It is. So yeah. we're, we're, we're adapting, and, and I'm not saying that you just, everything needs to be Saturday from 8.30 to 1.30, but there needs to be competitions and events and, and things for people to play and that suit their lifestyle, to your point. So, you know, the message out there, obviously, comes with, it. and Mark will talk about when he travels around the countryside, you know, we look forward to the Twilight Bowls continuing and growing because I think it's fair to say that we can say that a percentage of that 7% increase may well have come from people who may have touched the sport through Twilight Bowls business. Oh, I, I have yeah. no doubt, though, that, that so we are getting numbers coming it, through it, that area. It, it does give us positives, doesn't it? Yeah. Really so does. the Rangatahi we've discussed really yep. where we're at. Now, of course, the Bowls New Zealand AGM is coming up very shortly. Yes. Exciting, isn't it, Kevin? I know you're looking forward to that one. <laughs> Um, uh, Saturday, September the 10th, 11th, sorry, uh, of September, uh, it'll be by, by video, it'll be a pretty, um, uh, what do you call it, um, it'll be a half hour show at best. Um, what's nice though is we get to acknowledge um, uh, Mark O'Connor leaving as president, uh, he's done a, stir a tremendous job Certainly in two years. Is. Uh, and we welcome, without you know, without them being duly elected yet, but it looks like we're going to welcome Anne Wright from Christchurch uh, as our president, uh, and Phil Hillier from Wanganui as our vice president. Uh, and I think they, you know, they, I know them both now, um, and they'll be great additions uh, not only to the board but I think to the bowls community. Yeah, well, we saw, you know, uh, not being parochial, but yeah, prior to Mark. Uh, Jeanette Sinclair really, as president, rolled her sleeves up and got very involved in, let's say, the bowls community. And Mark has certainly followed that trend over, you know, and nothing's been a stretch too far. He's been an outstanding president. Oh, look, he's been to Gisborne more times than I've ever yeah. been to Gisborne <laughs> in the last two yeah, years. Yeah, so no, he's, he's been what the sport needs, and that being a visible, friendly, communicative, yeah, he's very, very done a fantastic job, and I'd like to say, Mark, on behalf of you know all of the bowlers around New Zealand, uh, and I'm, I, can, I can speak on behalf of them and say thanks. You've done, you've done a wonderful job as our president. Yeah, yeah, it really has. Um, can I also, and and uh, um, most people won't pick up on this one, but I, from my side of things, um, someone who's the equal of Mark is uh, Alan Smith. So Alan Smith is currently on our board. Uh, and he'll be leaving in September at this AGM after five years of service. Um, he's been terrific for, for the Bowls community. Uh, from a strategy governance perspective, he gets it. Uh, and in terms of me as well, in terms of mentoring, um, he's been fantastic as well. So I guess just to plug, you know, we've talked about presidents and vice presidents, but the anonymous people in terms of our game at governance level are, are the, the board. Well, they're very important then. Yeah. And you know, Jen, if we look really at the board over the last four years, you know, big thanks to all of those board members because they have been part of a decision making and governance process which is taking the sport forward yep. with, 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 with positives. So, oh. you know, they've done, they've done a, the board as a collective have done a sterling job. Yeah, and I think it's testament to our sport and our community too that uh, um, Alan Smith um, wasn't a bowler when he arrived Correct. five years ago. Now Alan and Sue uh, are members of St Heliers, active members of St Heliers and Whangamata Bowling Clubs as well. So um, I think that's testament to our sport, but also to their character and their nature that they not only you know got involved at the top end of the game, but they've got involved at the grassroots as well. So we talk about this when we get together, that just endorsing and communicating the Bowers New Zealand support, which is there for clubs, centres, you know, and you know, there's, there's plenty of supports there, isn't there? Yeah, and I think that's that's the message that I'm pushing. This I'm pushing two messages uh, this year uh, in terms of my centre visits. Um, one is around um, uh, that Bowls New Zealand is, is is here to help, is here to support, not here to, to govern and you know and be the gas tower. Um, we need to be active in supporting you or supporting a club on whatever project they want to work on. You know, we can't do everybody. Um, but we will certainly support anyone that asks. So um, that's probably my first big message in terms of my visits at the moment. Um, the other one is I just, you know, and, and um, we haven't really, we haven't talked about it at all actually because it feels like the Olympics has overshadowed it, but we had some negative media um, two or three weeks ago. Uh, and and, and my, the messages I go around the community at the moment is that, you know, if we can just put aside names and people for a minute, um, 
there is some behaviour in our community, in the bowls community, um, that resembles behaviour in, in New Zealand sporting communities and communities at large, but it's behaviour that we probably, you know, we shouldn't be tolerating these days. So I am pushing out a message out there uh, as I get around to actually go, you know what, those, those remarks, you know, the, um, uh, and I'm sure it's not, you, you won't have heard this at all, but that remark that, you know, women should be in the kitchen, yep. um, uh, you know, it may have been funny 20 years ago, correct, people, um, but it's not funny now. It's not, you know, and it's not something that we want, you know, new people coming into our community and into our clubs to see. So um, times are changing, and rightly so. Um, and let's let's put a put a little. They are changing, and we know as a country that we we've got to be more acceptance and tolerant to a whole lot of changes because New Zealand's gone through massive changes, and for our sport to be all encompassing, you know, we we need to be aware that it's important. Well, you know, and again to the imagery behind me, um, we are a sport that really celebrates diversity and Correct. inclusiveness. So we want people to come into our community uh, and feel like they belong. Um, so, you know, those little remarks that we, th that we think are funny and cute, you know, we might get a laugh to, well, you know, just have a think before you say them say them nowadays. And uh, it's the world we live in. I agree entirely, Mark. And I think that's a, a very good message you know, to close on because it's a, it, it's a unilateral measure, a message that, that, that I just, the sport to take on board for its own positive oh, and, and And let's, let's, be, let's be fairer here and let's not just say bowls. It's, um, it's sport in it's general. So needs to, all those sporting clubs, whether it's the squash, the rugby, the cricket, the netball, whatever it might be, uh, and the bowls. Um, we need to, you know, just just work on some of those little behaviours that exist. So that's it for August and of course September. We'll be updating you of the Bowls New Zealand AGM, of course, we've been and gone. But the exciting thing on the calendar, of course, coming up in early September is the North South match to be held in Dunedin, which Brennan Van Nisselroy and myself will be bringing live coverage for, for three days, I think it is, that will be covering that event and that starts really you could say our, our summer of bowls of uh, a lot of events which will be brought to the public to watch. Yeah, when does bowls finish and it when does it start? <laughs> it I, have, no. I thought I, I thought I had figured that out in my first year or two. Yeah, it was. It did. It, you know, bowling clubs, it's funny isn't it? You know, bowling clubs used to have a big thing about opening day and closing day. It was no such thing as closing day now. Yeah, really, it just it, carries on, you have, doesn't you, it? You have your presentation of your trophies, yep. but it's not closing day. Yeah, I'm feeling like in my head that our AGM, from a Bowls New Zealand's perspective, our AGM on September the 11th is the close and start. The same day. Same day. <laughs> yeah. That'll do. Right, thank you, Mark. And we'll thank be you. back with you in September. Thanks, Kevin.